So last Friday, the world experienced the biggest IT outage in history. We were hit with blue screens everywhere, from LA to London to Sydney, from banks to hospitals to airports. It affected 8.5 million Windows computers and caused billions in damages. And while it looks like Microsoft is to blame for this, this disaster actually had very little to do with them. This was all because of one small but catastrophic code change made by the US cybersecurity company CrowdStrike. So I'm gonna answer all the questions you may have about the world's biggest IT outage, including what exactly happened from a technical perspective, why Microsoft isn't at fault, and why it didn't happen to your computer. Who is CrowdStrike? CrowdStrike was created in 2011 in Austin, Texas, and they specialize in antivirus software. And surprisingly, they've been pretty reliable up until this incident. Because of that, major companies like Intel, Target, Salesforce, and tons of others from all industries rely on them to protect their organization from hackers. Major companies and organizations are especially vulnerable to hackers. For one, they usually have tens of thousands of computers connected to their private network. Whether they're laptops or phones, these computers are usually in the possession of their employees. And all it takes is for one employee device to be compromised for hackers to get into their entire network. And if they do, these major companies can provide a lot of value to the hacker. If they're able to gain access to a company's private network, they can steal or destroy confidential information and user data. They can take control of the company's entire system. They can even just threaten to do those things in exchange for ransom. So companies will have CrowdStrike software installed on their computers to protect them from that. One of their most successful products is called Falcon, which essentially works as like a spy on your computer. It can detect if and when there's any suspicious activity happening on your computer and stop it. But Falcon isn't just like any other app you would install on your device, which is the reason why they were able to take down millions of computers all at once. What's an operating system? Okay, so to understand what happened, we first need to briefly talk about how computers work. Computers are only made up of two things, hardware and software. Every physical piece of the computer, both inside and outside, is hardware. And all of this hardware needs to be able to interact somehow. For instance, when you tap on a keyboard, you should be able to see text on your screen. And when you move your mouse to click save, your data should save onto the hard drive inside of your computer. The reason all the hardware of a computer is able to work together is because of the computer's operating system. Without the operating system, these hardware components are just pieces of metal and plastic. The operating system is the software that manages the hardware. It's what tells the monitor what to show on the screen based off of what you typed on the keyboard. And it's what tells the speaker what sounds to play based off of what song you picked. It basically controls everything. And you're much more familiar with operating systems than you might expect. You know mobile operating systems like Android and iOS. And you know some desktop operating systems like Mac OS and Windows. All operating systems have the same objective, but most work slightly differently from each other. That not only makes one better than the other, depending on how it's being used, but also means that any software that you want to create has to be built for each type of operating system. That's the reason why you can't download iPhone apps onto Android phones, and you can't download Windows applications onto MacBooks. So if we think of a computer in layers, the operating system sits on top of the hardware, meaning the operating system controls the hardware. The operating system also has a few different layers, but they can be categorized into two main layers, which is the user space and the kernel space. So the user space is what we know. Any app we download or any app that already lives on our computers would live in the user space. But the kernel space is the part of the operating system that directly interacts with the hardware. The kernel is what actually makes the hardware work. Apps in the user space can't control the hardware directly. They essentially have to go to the kernel and ask permission to access the hardware. The kernel needs to manage and protect the hardware. So it won't just let any app send any commands it wants to to the hardware. The good thing about this though is not only does it prevent any app developer, whether trusted or third party, from controlling the hardware, but it also keeps the apps isolated. For instance, if Excel isn't working for some reason, Excel may crash, but you can still use the other apps and your computer is still working fine. So what actually happened? Unlike any app that we're used to that's installed on our computers, CrowdStrike's Falcon software actually does live in the kernel space and therefore has direct access to the hardware. It doesn't need permission to control the hardware. Because the purpose of Falcon is to be able to quickly detect and stop any suspicious activity or threat on your computer, 
it needs access and visibility to all parts of the computer, which has its pros, but as we've seen, has its cons. So last Friday, CrowdStrike sent out an update to 8.5 million computers around the world that run the Windows operating system and have the CrowdStrike's Falcon software installed on it. They're able to send these updates directly over the internet. These updates are sent in the form of files or what they call channel files. And they're sent to a specific folder on your computer and each file has a unique identifier. So according to the blog post that CrowdStrike wrote after all this happened, sending out Falcon updates isn't unusual for them. Apparently they've always sent multiple channel files a day to the computers that are running their software. This is a way to keep them safe from new vulnerabilities that they learn about as they come up. And though they have had customers run into issues with their updates here or there, it looks like it was never at an alarming enough scale, at least to them, to change their process. But this time, the channel file had a huge logical error in it that prevented the Falcon software from reloading the way it should. Now, if Falcon ran in the user space of the operating system, it would crash, but you'd be able to use the rest of your computer just fine. But remember, Falcon runs in the kernel space. And if there's ever an issue loading software in the kernel space, Windows will just stop the computer from running and show you what's known as the blue screen of death. Now, you might see this and think, okay, let me just restart my computer. But you'll find that every time you try, you're just led back to this blue screen. Well, this is because not only does Falcon have direct access to the hardware, they also set themselves up in a way that they must be running at all times, including when you restart your computer. Because of that, this means that this wasn't an issue that CrowdStrike could fix remotely. When your Windows computer blue screens, the only way to fix it is manually, which means millions and millions of computers now all have to individually resolve this issue. To fix it, all you need to do is go to the CrowdStrike folder on your computer and just delete that new channel file that contained the error. And once you do, your computer can then reboot properly as it did before. But it's not as straightforward as it sounds. For one, given that your computer is blue screening and restarting it doesn't fix it, your only option is to restart your computer in safe mode, which is essentially just troubleshooting mode. There's not much you can do in safe mode. It essentially just gives you the bare minimum to be able to diagnose and fix whatever's going on with your computer. But from there, you can at least go navigate to the file and delete it. But to make matters worse, remember Falcon is mainly used on computers that are owned by organizations and companies. And as you may have experienced if you have a work computer from your employer, you usually aren't an admin user on the computer, which means you can't really do or change much on the computer unless you get the IT department to temporarily grant you admin permissions or to have them physically come do it for you. This includes restarting your computer in safe mode. So for IT departments that aren't able to remotely give users admin permissions, they had to physically go to multiple computers and fix this issue. This not only includes PCs, but even the little computers at kiosks, for example, and Windows servers that run in data centers and are also running Falcon. For servers specifically, you literally have to go to every single server and plug it into a laptop just to restart it. So that's why we saw all those blue screens and why it took hours at minimum just to fix it. Okay, so FAQs. Why didn't this happen to my Windows computer? This outage mainly affected Windows computers that were not only owned and or managed by large corporations and companies, but also was running the Falcon software. As disruptive as it was, Microsoft said that this actually only affected less than 1% of all Windows machines. Is this Microsoft's fault? Not necessarily. Microsoft owns the Windows operating system. And since it was the only one blowing up Friday morning, it initially looked like Microsoft was the issue. But as we talked about, the root of the issue was from the error inside the channel file from CrowdStrike, not the operating system. Microsoft Windows doesn't pay CrowdStrike for their services and vice versa. CrowdStrike is a service that the companies pay for directly. So the reason we saw issues with airlines like Delta, United, KLM is because these companies pay CrowdStrike to protect their computers. 
I saw an analogy on Reddit that was something like, if you hire someone to build your house and then hire someone else to protect it from burglars and that person ends up burning down your house, you can't blame the person that built the house for not keeping your house safe. It's kind of the same relationship where Microsoft built the operating system and companies hired CrowdStrike to protect the operating systems. There's the argument that Microsoft should have been more aware of what's being pushed to their systems and also shouldn't let third parties have so much control over the hardware, which I do get. But we do need antivirus software specifically to have a certain level of access and control of the hardware to work most effectively. Also, Microsoft does have a fairly strict certification process called the WHQL certification that is supposed to ensure that any software they're allowing to run in the kernel space won't cause an issue like this. CrowdStrike has a certification, but from what I understand, CrowdStrike treated these channel files as code updates rather than data updates. With data updates, you shouldn't be changing any underlying logic of the software. All you're doing is providing it with more information. And because of that, you don't necessarily need to be recertified because you're not adding any of that new logic. But with code changes, you are, and therefore you should be getting a new certification every time you introduce that new logic to the software. But from what I've read, the certification is a lengthy process and they wanted to find a way to get around that which obviously backfired. <laughs> Another argument was that Microsoft should fail safely in these type of situations. Meaning that even though the channel file had an error, it shouldn't have stopped the entire computer. But if it was a situation where instead there was some malicious code in that channel file, we would want it to fail so that it doesn't cause any further damage to the computer. My company uses CrowdStrike and my work computer is a MacBook. Why didn't my computer break? So there were two main reasons I found why one, Macs weren't affected, but two, they shouldn't run into this particular issue at least in the future. One is because that bad update was specifically for Windows computers. But two, since 2019, Apple has slowly been restricting developers from deploying software in the kernel space. They used to allow what they called kernel extensions that allow developers to develop in the kernel space in the same way that CrowdStrike's Falcon did in Windows. But now they make it harder and harder to do that and now encourage developers to use system extensions, which run in the user space and are a safer way to communicate with the hardware. Anyways, I'm on a mission to demystify tech, especially in an age where we're being run by it left and right and don't necessarily know what's going on. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and check out some of my previous videos for some simple explanations on everyday tech.